Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're running with the Bulls! That's right, Johnny, running with the Bulls 2.0, or the Battle of Bull Run, the second oh. one. Oh, we're heading Because back. apparently one wasn't enough, and unfortunately, <sighs> spoiler alert, if you don't want to watch the whole hour-long thing that this is probably going to be, I, no, uh, what? doesn't go any no, better for us all. a second time. I mean, you, I mean, you gave the whole damn thing away, Tommy. I, well, I, I, I watch till the end, see what happens. And believe uh, it, is, it yeah, well, believe it or not, this one is a little bit more. Inter- I mean, I know that we had the we had the hot air balloon that crashed in the last yeah. one, and the panicking, you know, the picnickers that got that got ransacked and, and trampled I got on. A gun. Uh, you were one of them. You got the gun from that one, Johnny. Uh, believe it or not, this one is as funny, if not funnier, of the stupidity that ensues. That is the American Civil War. We are playing at war. We yeah, have well, no and, idea and, what we're doing. Yeah, and by funny you mean uh, our generals are idiots, and yes. we lost a battle that cost many lives, likely, and uh, it, it was an embarrassing loss for an embarrassing the loss North for during, <laughs> so, during, during the war. Yeah, so, so the Second Battle of Bull Run, a.k.a. Manassas, if you're the Dirty Dirty Rebels, uh, happens between August 28th through the 30th of August. Uh, background here, at this point in the war, things are going okay for the Union. The Mississippi is almost under complete control. Uh, good victories out in the West, but we are following that up with McClellan's very much yeah. abysmal Peninsula Campaign where he outnumbered the enemy nearly 9 to 1 at one point, <laughs> and still somehow... It's his thing. It's, it's what lo- he does. Lost. <laughs> That can't yeah, that's fade. that's what he loves so. to do best. But then, yeah, this is on the tail end of uh, and basically an entire summer where we were we were doing really racking well. up victories. Yeah. We were doing the damn thing, and this war was looking like it was coming to an end. And then, yeah, and then McClellan, then the McClellan. Yes, then McClellan. That's all we got to do from now on. Is then <laughs> McClellan. Uh, Lincoln has given command to the new Army of Virginia, uh, and overall commander Halleck uh, has tasked yeah. General Pope of the uh, of to command the Army of Virginia to protect Washington and distract Lee from McClellan and hoping that maybe either Pope mm-hmm. or McClellan can do away with Lee. Well, and we know McClellan's not going to do it, so we have hope for Pope. Or is it no hope for Pope? And, well, it's, it's, well, in, in our in our week to week that we follow, we said no hope for Pope because there's no hope for Pope. Uh, but Johnny, the problem here is that Lee had no respect for McClellan and thought that he wasn't a threat to him and would turn his army against Pope. He goes, I'm going to go and knock out Pope was because right. McClellan is not going to do anything. He's not going to chase me. He's not going to pursue me. He's just going to sit down there doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. So I will turn my attention to Pope, yeah. which he does. Which the North wasn't fully expecting him to do. Uh, This is a part of Lee's Northern Virginia campaign where he thought he could destroy Pope's army and then turn his attention back towards McClellan. On August 3rd, uh, well before this fight is going to take place, General Halleck is going to order McClellan to pull out from his Peninsula campaign to assist Pope. We're already seeing the pieces aligning. We're already seeing that Lee's moving towards Pope's direction. Uh, Halleck says, hey, uh, McClellan, get your ass back to D.C. and protect D.C. And then, you know... And, and, and assist Pope. Three and a half weeks or so? To, yeah, to, to, to move his army. To, yeah. to get there. And, I mean, he uh, we know he's pretty good at walking armies around because that's all he does. Yep. So uh, he should have Mc- gotten there post-haste, no problem. Should have, but McClellan is going to protest this to Lincoln himself saying, I don't want to move. I can win this Peninsula campaign. And Lincoln's like, you haven't... You haven't yeah, done anything. won it in like six months yet, so I don't know why you think you can win it now. So he's not even going to begin to move his troops until the 14th of August. <laughs> Waste and then, 11 days. Yeah, and then just take a of, sweet of ass time. petty arguing and probably yep. telegraphing back and forth with Harry yep. Lincoln. Yep, uh, and then he's going to take a sweet ass time moving his army in any direction <sighs> towards Pope's God. aid. Uh, this battle is nearly almost not going to happen when Jackson's movements were discovered and Pope sent Nathaniel Banks' corps to attack Jackson at the Battle of Cedar Mountain on August 9th. Uh, Banks is initially successful at driving back Jackson, uh, but Pope is a moron and doesn't send reinforcements to continue this advantage. And instead, let's Jackson get aid from A.P. Hill, who's going to save Jackson, and then right. in turn prevent uh, Jackson's destruction. Because, I mean, we really, mm-hmm. if Pope would have just taken the advantage here, Banks would have done it. But Banks didn't yeah. have so, the uh, numbers to push his advantage that he gained at Cedar Mountain and turned what could have been an overwhelming victory into a, eh, we traded places. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's because... Stonewall Jackson got the reinforcements that he needed, 
Yes. Even though he was on the run, if the North yes. got the reinforcements they needed before that, it would have been that would have been over, and then this would have never happened. And so, uh, I guess we'll find out at the very end just how many lives would have been saved if uh, <laughs> if, if this had gone that way. Uh, Jackson is going to learn that given the uh, reinforcements, uh, Jackson is going to learn. Ultimately, that Pope's army is all together and concentrated, uh, which is going to prevent Jackson from attacking one corps at a time like Jackson was hoping to do. Uh, Because at this time, like, usually the armies are a little spread out, like, as they're marching. It's not like they're all in one big lump position. But Pope actually does have his army all lumped together, so (laughs) Jackson can't. You know, Jackson's horribly outnumbered, can't face Pope head on. His hope was to, like, take one corps at a time and just piecemeal them apart, but that's yeah. not going to happen. Uh, so on the 12th, Jackson is going to pull back to Gordonsville uh, with Lee sending Longstreet to reinforce him on the 13th. Now, through the rest of that week, up until the 25th of August, Pope and Jackson are trying to engage each other in skirmishes all along the Rappahannock River, uh, which has been swollen due to heavy, heavy rains. And are they Pope on either a, side of it? Yeah, on, yeah, they're, they're popping off shots at okay. each other across the, yeah, across the other side. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and Pope is going to take the Union approach of well, instead of directly attacking the enemy, I'm going to dig a hole and sit in it and wait and see what happens. Because that's You're going to get flooded. Way. <laughs> that's the like, union way. We, <laughs> we have the numerical advantage and we do nothing with it. Uh, at and this, this point, is, uh, um, now this is, I'm, I'm sorry, this is a war where we're trying to gain back the South that has seceded from our nation. We need to get that territory yes. back take yes. it it's ours yes yes uh, not this traitor government that is fake and not really no you know uh, recognized by anybody and and but we just we just stand around dig in and yes okay yep uh, at this point reinforcements from, from mcclellan are arriving in the area now i say in the area uh not actually to pope say because they're not they're like in the general vicinity close but not actually close enough to help a if, couple say, counties over who knows a battle would kick off <laughs> yeah so <laughs> we're just a couple hours walk from uh from you guys and if a battle happens we'll not be there in time to do anything so <laughs> what's the point they could be, they might as well be in california foreshadowing johnny and lee is going to realize that he is heavily outnumbered in fact on paper this looks like it could be the end for old granny granny lee because his army is about been. ready to be enclosed upon. Right? He is outnumbered, and uh, the banks are swollen, so it's not like he can easily retreat somewhere. Maybe, Maybe this is it. attack. Uh, so on the 25th, Lee's going to change his plans again on the fly. He's going to order Jackson and Stewart to flank Pope's army and cut off the supply and communication lines at Orange and Alexandria Railroad. Uh, and by doing this, it's going to force Pope's army to disengage from their trenched positions along the Rappahannock and, uh, and face Jackson head on while Lee would then proper fuck him in the butt. Yeah. And did that happen? Did, did they go through with it? Pretty much, because on the 25th, because, uh, Jackson... you keep saying all these things that could happen and everything, and every time with the North, it's like, oh, but they, they, they didn't do, do the do. damn thing. But in the South... Uh, but the South, they're going to they, go ahead gonna, and do yeah, it that, because yep. they have Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee, and they they both know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, they're, that's what they're going to do. So on the 25th, cool. Johnny Jackson and Stewart are going to move out and reach Salem that night. And on the 26th, Jackson is going to take the Orange and Alexandria Railroad, then move on to Manassas Junction, uh, where he's going to take a massive Union supply depot on the 27th. And all of this is according to plan because Pope is going to pull back from his defensive positions along the Rappahannock. Now, keep in mind, Halleck put Pope in command of the Army of Virginia, the Northern Army of Virginia, that is, Mm -hmm. uh, because they thought he was more aggressive than McClellan. I mean, to be fair, everybody's more aggressive than McClellan. Uh, But so far, what Pope has done is dig a hole and wait. Which is uh, straight out of McClellan's playbook. <laughs> straight out of McClellan's playbook, yep. Uh, so not really what happens, Nothing. because so far he had the opportunity to destroy Jackson at Cedar Mountain and yeah. didn't commit his army, so he didn't do it there and instead dug a hole. Uh, then uh, 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 once Jackson and Longstreet unite up there at Manassas Junction, and even though he is outnumbered, uh, Lee's army is still going to decide that uh, attacking is the right thing to do here because, again, well, from what he has seen... <laughs> across all of the Union soldiers that have fought them, or generals that have fought them, is uh, they're not, I mean, yeah, they got the numerical advantage, but if they're not going to, you know, attack. 
Who cares? Tom, Tommy, he can't he can't just attack if he's outnumbered. We I mean, uh McClellan has had people outnumbered tenfold before and didn't attack because didn't he attack. didn't have nope. the right numbers. Nope. Like nope. if you can't take over an army without losing a single man, it's not worth doing anything, right? Like Nope. No nope. that's where it's, we're at. Uh, so what uh, so what Pope does do is he allows Jackson and Longstreet to unite, he allows uh, Jackson to take Manassas, and now is forced to go and face Jackson at Manassas on the 27th. So, we, we let the final boss build up. Yes, we sure did. <laughs> and now it's like... <laughs> All right, you, get, you gave, you gave you him get extra you health bar, and now you got to go fight him anyway. The, uh, you could have fought him when he was weak as shit. Nope. On the 27th and 28th, Jackson is going to set up defenses uh, just below Stony Ridge in an unfinished railroad cut that provides a ready-made trench. This is a railroad that was being built before the war kicked off, and the war kicked off, and they're like, maybe we don't. Not, not worth finishing. finishing. Not, finish, <laughs> not finishing that while it's now in dirty, dirty rebel hands. <laughs> so the, so the, the Northern Railroad Company bolted and the Southern Railroad Company that doesn't exist hasn't yep. finished it. Uh, now, uh, Jackson does have a good field of view of the approaches to Manassas and has control of the roads that would l allow Longstreet to link up with him. Uh -oh. uh, or, alternatively, Jackson to retreat if Pope were to move with haste and fight him before Longstreet got there. Well, that's not, Pope not, not a problem. It's not going to do. <laughs> I mean, so it allows <laughs> it allows Jackson to see Pope marching his army up towards Manassas. Yeah, that's got to be like plan J or K for <laughs> for him because there's not really much of a concern there of Pope no. moving post haste. And this is going to lead us Johnny up to the second battle of Bull Run finally like 20 minutes Oh, that's all the preamble. The that's right. That's all and here we go. Uh, now, by Buckle noon up. on the 28th, Pope is going to arrive at Manassas Junction and not see Jackson's men, so he naturally assumes that Jackson is on the run, which he isn't. And then what, he's wait, looking why, around what, going... Why, why, would he, why is that his first jumping-off point for assumptions? Oh, well... well I, 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 he must have saw my just, army coming and just bolted out of here. And, oh, yeah. And, leave Manassas. and Stonewall Jackson is uh, known for his running. Yeah, he's not really known for that. <laughs> uh, he's known for sitting put and getting half his men slaughtered, but... Yeah, yeah, hey, who gives a shit? He doesn't care about his men. <laughs> he's got a war to win. He's got slaves to He sure doesn't. Uh, now, not knowing that literally Jackson is watching in his trench line, like watching the army move up and going, <laughs> and then, and then Pope, thinking that Jackson has ran, has to figure out which direction did Jackson run to. And for whatever reason, he decides that it's going to be Centerville. So he's going to move a portion of his army in the opposite direction <laughs> Jackson is. Now, are we sure he just didn't have a lady in Centerville that he wanted he to go have. see? Like hey, this all seems like uh, a ploy to get out of trying to trying to fight this battle because eh, oh no I didn't see him and so I had to chase him somewhere else go to we'll go to Centerville which is uh, not, I, I'm, I assume clearly not where he would have retreated no that's not where he retreated though no, kind of in the opposite direction there now Jackson is gonna get uh, gonna get a word from Runner that Longstreet is on his way and Longstreet is like within close enough range that uh, if Jackson were to go ahead and I don't know. Attack Pope. Uh, the road is open Start for Jackson to be, yeah, able to reinforce him before you know shit really gets out of hand. So yeah, so they wouldn't they wouldn't hit us full force with everybody, but they hit us with that initial attack, and then the the the, the next reinforcements wave to be able to be there is, yes. is right yep. behind. Yep. Them. Yep, out. yep, yep. So Jackson is determined for a fight. He dons on some civilian clothes, of gets on a horse, is. rides out to see the federal column of Union troops marching towards Centerville, going, yep, they're marching in the opposite direction of where I'm at. Again, imagine, <laughs> Jackson dons on a civilian coat and goes, I'm a farmer. All of his aides are like, what the fuck are you doing? You're going to get captured. And he goes, have you seen Pope? Have you seen McClellan? They don't know what the Have you been doing. paying attention? So have you been youth. watching the Civil War in hindsight series uh, being put on by these guys? Because uh, they don't do shit. He literally rides up to the Union Federal Column. He's like, hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, marching Centerville? Yeah, Jackson, totally that way. <laughs> totally that way. <laughs> They don't no nobody knows what he looks like. No I, I, uh, I guess I guess okay, I get that. Um but Seems like maybe there should be pictures circulated. Probably. Uh, with this intel, Jackson's actually afraid that Pope is going to bypass his army entirely and link up with McClellan, thus, like, really outnumbering him and proper fucking him. So his <laughs> so, idea here is now I have to attack now. Jackson, he overthought it. I have to attack now, <laughs> or uh, I risk McClellan and Pope linking up. Just can't do that. Uh, so the so whole he, he, thought, he thought Pope was playing 4D chess over here. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, well, I'm trying to find him. 
So in a rarity here, this battle is actually going to kick off pretty late in the evening at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Jackson's going to order his men forward, and the artillery begins shelling the Union column that's marching towards <laughs> Centerville. Jesus. This artillery shelling does halt the Union march, and Federal General Gibbon and Doubleday are left to respond to Jackson. Uh, Gibbon thought that since Pope told him that the enemy was in Centerville, that the Confederate guns couldn't be anything more than a couple of horse-drawn howitzers that were on retreat sent to harass his line. So he's going to order... Now, uh, hang on. Like, he's he's taking him at the... Like, the, like the word of God instead of what is happening in front of him. Or, I guess, probably to the side of him. Yeah, he just he just knows that he's, his men are getting shelled by artillery. And it's just oh, assuming no, no, yeah, that... No, no, oh, no, well, can't be everybody. It's, 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 it's a couple of small howitzers that are horse-drawn and... Uh, well, I can take those guns, is what he's thinking. I can take those guns, Johnny. So he orders the 2nd Wisconsin Infantry to take the Confederate guns on the hill. They deploy as skirmishers and are able to disp uh, disperse the advanced Confederate pickets near Bronner's Farm, when all of a sudden they were met with an 800-round volley on their flank from Storm. Stonewall's brigade. Stonewall's actual, like, the brigade that he commanded before he got all these great promotions. It's that brigade opens up with 800 rounds of volley right into the 2nd Wisconsin's flank from just about 140-ish yards away, so nearly point blank. Heavily outnumbered, the 2nd Wisconsin does not retreat, but instead responds with their own volley. Both sides are going to scramble to add more and more units to the fight, uh, with the battle lines being about 80 yards at part. During a good chunk of this battle, we are we can see the whites Eight. of the enemy eyes at this that's point. A, we are that, that close. It's a football inside of a football field. They're all inside of a football field. There inside of a football field. Volleying round. Just outside a field goal Straight range of a football field. Chests. Yeah. Uh, Jackson himself is going to be oh. personally uh, command the troops on his line during this engagement. Jackson himself is going to go up and say, "This is my old brigade. I'm going to command them." So he does. He goes up and commands them. And at one point, Jackson is going to order up horse artillery that would fire into the 19th Indiana. Indiana news! Hey, but unfortunately, they're being fired upon oh. at just 90-ish yards away. And they're going to get cut to hell. Uh, this knockout point-blank fight would last for hours until nightfall around 9 p.m. when Gibbon would do a fighting withdrawal for, uh, to the tree line. So Could all things considered. standing there for hours watching? Yeah. Folks get shot all around yeah, you. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you're you're here. I mean, you're you're within there. eye shot the of seeing people drop. You're with you. You could. You're, yeah, I mean, it's uh, the yeah, smoke, this is the smell, everything. I yeah. mean, it, um, it had to have been impossible to see through everything at that point. But credit to Gibbon because his men do hold. They don't rout. They don't run. They hold their position and fight. And it costs him dearly because Johnny, uh, the second Wisconsin, is going to lose 276 men out of its 430, while the Stonewall Brigade is going to lose 340 of its men out of its 800. So we've got 50% casualties on both sides here. Yeah, yeah. So Holy shit. I would really not want to be in Stonewall's brigade because it did, I mean, he lost 50% of his men at the first Battle well, of Bull mean, Run and is now losing 50% of them again. No, he, he clearly goes by uh, uh, or has uh, listened to my philosophy of if you don't give a shit about human life, you anything can accomplish anything. Yep. Uh, total during this day, Jackson is going to deploy around 6,200 men against Gibbons' 2,100. Keep in mind, 2,100. Gibbons is heavily outnumbered here. Yeah. Uh, and somehow Jackson is not able to achieve victory here, let alone a decisive one. And it can barely, like, he gets a tactical draw is what he gets because Gibbons pulls back oh. to the tree line and no ground is really, tr you know, changed between either Another side. Another one of those, yeah. So this is the argument here where Jackson might not be as great of a general as we think he is. He lost 50% of his men uh, sounds, out of his brigade. like maybe he's and, a bit of a butcher. Uh, and didn't really, yeah, didn't really gain a whole lot of anything. Um, yeah, he's just he, he's just an old dude who likes uh, sending kids to their grave. Yeah, the Confederates here are also going to lose two division commanders, uh, which is a huge loss here as far as uh, leadership goes to the Confederacy. And all this is on the portion of the battle where the Union is going to lose 1,150 men to Confederate losses of 1,250. So Confederates are going to lose a little bit more. I mean, Gibbons loses 50% of his entire command during this battle, but he yeah. survives to fight another day and keeps the Union Army intact uh, here at the first day of the battle, of, second battle of Bull Run. Yeah, now are you, are you, 
are you starting to think with me that if maybe the North had lost a couple of uh, generals or uh, we would have done a little bit better. Uh, it might have yeah. been better off. It might have been, be- like, might have been better off if we lost a couple. It's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? Yeah, if we lost <laughs> a couple, it might have been. Needed it might have been. That. <laughs> Uh, through the night, uh, <laughs> through the night, Pope is going to believe I mean, that his forces. Not really, a human being, but you know what I mean. Yeah, this is where the idiocy comes into play here, because Pope is going to believe that the forces that he came in contact with of Jackson's uh, during the day was just his retreating guard, you know, his rear guard, still, and that Jackson on is him. on the run, and that he can take Jackson in the morning with a push, as opposed to uh-huh. Jackson intentionally drawing him into this fight. Because Longstreet is now on his way, he's there. On his he way, he's help. basically there. Yeah, he's he's now. I mean, you know, through the night, he's gonna he's gonna get some aid. Um, mm-hmm. Determined to destroy Jackson in the morning uh, before Longstreet can reinforce Jackson uh, is his goal here. He is gonna be wrong. Oh, 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 so wrong as Jackson has drawn him into this fight exactly where he wants. Because at 6 a.m. on the 29th, Longstreet and his 25,000 men had began marching towards Manassas Junction to reinforce Jackson. Uh, Jackson is going to redeploy his 20,000 men across a 3,000-yard line south of Stony Ridge, pending an attack from Pope, just sitting there waiting for it to kick off. Uh, Jackson's positions here is, that's however, so, not very... That's such a big line. It is a line, big line. Uh, it is not a very ideal position, as large portions of it are in wooded areas that prevent effective deployment of artillery. He's also going to be particularly weak on his left flank, where A.P. Hill was... Uh, again, because the artillery can't effectively be deployed there. And any decent general would have been able to look at the terrain, realize where you would attack uh, without worry of artillery fire, and attack there. But Pope is a fucking moron and yeah. doesn't attack there because it's Pope. Why would he? He's why, uh, an idiot. Uh, why, why would he bother? He, he's probably just going to dig in again. Pope instead is going to wake up in the morning about 6 a.m. and realize that his unions under Ricketts and King had pulled back south and Gibbons had arrived in Centerville uh, after his fighting retreat, uh, finding none of Jackson's army and reported back to Pope that, nope, uh, Jackson wasn't retreating after all. Well, good morning. (laughs) Good morning. Uh, Gibbons is also going to report like an idiot that he had no idea where McDowell's forces were. Uh, to which Pope responded, God damn McDowell, he's never where he's supposed to be. <laughs> what? How? Uh, how do we win this war at the end? Like, good God, this is... It, it must have... It, it, it was just inevitable, right? It was, it was just, inevitable, like, yeah, It was yeah. just gonna happen no matter it's what. It's gonna happen. Because, yep, yep, yep. good God. Uh, Gibbons yeah, is gonna find... Is he's gonna... He's going to find McDowell's units under Porter drawing rations south of the lines, and King's were turned uh, over to Hatchet because King had an epileptic episode, and so King's for you know he's not able to command his troops. He's he's actively having seizures, so his <laughs> forces get turned over to Hatchet. What? Uh, and General Reynolds' units, who were also underneath McDowell, <laughs> was he were, really or was he was he faking? Was this a, no? He was literally okay. yeah. He was All legitimately right. happy. Uh, uh, now because that's what I, I'd go into like I'd, I'd pretend. Uh, General Reynolds, uh, uh, General of the Black Cat Division here, uh, he's going to be uh, put under temporary command of Siegel because he is the only you know, brigade of, of McDowell's troops that are in the location they're supposed to be at. But McDowell's not there, so Reynolds is like some... All right, Siegel, so that, you're my guy. Tell me where them. to go. Use me because clearly my guy is shitting in the woods somewhere. I don't know where he is. So he's not where he's supposed the, to be. The way we're picking our new leaders is just, can you show up? Can you show up at this point? Uh, Pope still <laughs> believes, you, even at the dawn, even after hearing the reports from Gibbons that says he's not in, you know, Jackson's not in Centerville. This was not a retreat. Uh, watch your back. Oh, and by the way, nobody knows where McDowell is or his army is. So <laughs> it's just missing. Am I this out. Pope still thinks Jackson's on the run. Still, for some reason, thinks Jackson's what? on the run, and he Who can. Is... His bravado is just insane. Like who? Why? Why so he creates you, bud? the most obscure battle plans that's like a 50-page manifesto that he hands out to his generals that they could only potentially During work battle. if all the generals were where they were supposed to be and everybody moved with exact coordination and speed. Everybody's t- you know, little pocket watches were synced up to the right sure. time. But yep. we already know that's not going to happen because McDowell's gone. We don't even know where he is. Also, uh, the training is abysmal. Nobody yes. knows anything. None of the troops know how to march or do shit. Like... It, it, it's a clusterfuck. No matter what, no matter how you paint it, 
And so make, he, he, he during battle, this is he, during battle, like uh, some night probably during it, and he draws yeah, this up yeah. and then yeah. disseminates the information yeah. and, and, and yeah. hopes for it to work. Uh, Johnny, guess what? He's not even on the battlefield yet. Pope Pope is still he's on his way to Manassas Junction. He's not even there yet. He, so he's so he's on a, sitting these, on a horse miles away. Shit down or something. Yep. 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 What yep. the. It's going to depend on Siegel. This isn't a game, Pope. This is actuality. Like, it's not it's not D&D where you just tell the dungeon master what you're going to do and, and roll a dice and hope for it to happen. Like, this is <laughs> reality. His goal here is to have Siegel and Porter underneath, you know, McDowell, who's not there, uh, attack Jackson's flanks on opposite flanks at the same time. But only Siegel's men are in position, and it's only <laughs> Siegel who's going to open up the fight. Siegel is also the highest ranking officer on the Union uh, aside at the actual battlefield at this point, and it's- nobody really likes Siegel because he's German and we're racist in the United States. And we think that he's not good enough because he's German. What? So, yeah. What? Crazy, uh, Tommy, right? no, <laughs> Tommy, first of all, uh, that's xenophobic, not racist. Uh, Whatever, Unless fine. he was uh, also a different nationality and German, which <laughs> seems that's, unlikely. Yeah. Seems unlikely. <laughs> fine. Xenophobic. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That's all. So, anyways, Siegel is going to attack AP Hill's positions, which is, you know, the position that you do want to attack, uh, which if he did at mass... At a uniform point, would have been successful, but he's gonna take a book, a page out of the McClellan and every other U.S. general book at this point. Is why send everybody when you can send like one regiment at a time? Oh, that didn't work. Send another regiment. Oh, that didn't work. Send another regiment. Oh, that didn't work. Now, which Jackson is gonna? What Jackson is gonna do during this battle is he's gonna allow the attack. He's gonna absorb the attack and then gonna counterattack. And then when the new attack comes up, he's gonna allow it to attack and he's gonna counterattack. One step backwards, two step forwards. Yeah. Uh, easy. Uh, yep. Now, ha- now, ha- have we tried um, literally just lining everybody single file and having them march and shoot? Like, for, you know, a person in the front marches and shoots, and then until he dies, then the person behind him goes and, you know, walks, steps over it, and then shoots. I like, where, I, I like where your mind, uh, your mind is going here, Johnny, but the problem with that is uh, the bullets do tend to go through more than one body. Uh, so all right, so fine. The third person will have to stop. Like uh, you know, ribs and spines are going to deflect most of them anyway. Uh, fair point. Uh, like I said, he's going to attack over a broad front very, very slowly, which is able to be absorbed in the counterattacks, engaging yeah. in fierce hand-to-hand combat. Is what we're getting oh. in this point. Uh, Union General Milroy, hearing the fight, throws his three regiments uh, at the Confederates with the 82nd Ohio stumbling into an undefended ravine, uh, uh, which is. Um, which is basically like a, a little uh, 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 cutaway for the railroad that was being built. Goes in there. Yeah. It's undefended. Perfect defilade from the Confederates. He is on the Confederate flank. And if he was going to exploit that, would have been a very good outcome. And would have turned the but, flank of Confederate forces underneath Isaac Trimble. But it's the Union, and but, they don't do that. And the flank doesn't get turned. And instead, Trimble is going to get reinforcements. And in 20 minutes, Johnny, 20 minutes, Milroy's division is going to lose 300 men. What? Just cut to shit. Three, what, how, 300 men. In 20 minutes. In 20, 20 minutes. minutes? Yeah. yeah. Meade's brigade is going that's, to come across. That's 15 uh, men every minute. Yeah. Meade's brigade, when he's fighting, is going to come across men from King's Command from the day prior and attempt to get as many wounded Union boys who've been sitting there all night with their guts hanging out wounded back to safety as they can, because that's a scene you don't want to walk across. I'm, I'm sure every one of them recovered with the stellar medical care that was available <laughs> at the time. By the time Pope arrives on the battlefield, it's 1 p.m. Siegel has gained very little ground, but thought that he was doing well. He thought, like, all right, mission accomplished because He's trying. I'm gaining some ground, and it doesn't matter because I was just supposed to be a diversion yeah, no, for yeah, Porter. Yeah, no, yeah, the other should be doing his thing. I'm a diversion for Porter, so certainly Porter has been doing something this whole time. Man. But instead... Porter hasn't been doing not. anything. He ignored the orders because he reported back to Pope that um, Longstreet's right there on my flank. If I attack <laughs> Longstreet, well, so, yeah. so he doesn't. So basically, if he, so he, if he comes and attacks and Longstreet's right there to F 
him up on the side where he's attacking uh, uh, down um, into Jackson or whoever. Uh, so when Porter, fi- I mean, when when when, uh, when uh, uh, Pope finally arrives in the battlefield, Siegel gladly gives command over to Pope, say, "You're in control of this shit show now." <laughs> Pope is thinking that he's just gonna have to do a mop up action, but instead found only one part of his army actually doing anything at all. So he sends what has to be the most obscure and confusing order to his commanders, known as the quote Joint Order, uh, which is another 50-page document, not really, what but the? another I another mean, massive, on, confusing, contradictory order that I mean, says. Just- um, Keep it simple, stupid. What are you doing? He, he describes the attack on the Confederate left, which is already going on, and gives unclear orders to the remainder of his army of McDowell and Porter, which in general says, go in the direction of Gainville to attack Jackson's right and to establish with the other commands and then halt. Uh, but, but this is where it gets really fucking bad, is he says, uh, and I quote here, if any considerable advantages are to be gained from departing from this order, it will not be strictly carried out giving Porter his complete and total outs of Longstreet's right there if I move Longstreet. Yeah. Uh, that, I don't... That's... That's awful. When you that's, give an order, I, you give so, it correct. Okay, how, how you you attack that position there now. Out. You attack that position there now. That's all your order needs to be. All your yeah, order needs I to mean, be. I mean, okay, so but how, how is this... So these are... I assume this is given to a person... Yeah, runners that, that then yeah yeah it's that get, like written written back. orders that are handed out and they're they're distributed and, yeah, and yeah run, then run, taken runners yeah back yeah. to uh, the commanders during battle uh, yes very complicated orders and all of the runners have to get back and they have yes. to get back around the same time or yes. at least under a certain time uh, and I'm guessing the opposite and good God what a mess uh, now, the logistics of this are horrific. Um, and then the ability doing, for any of our troops to do anything is uh, not like. Now, in defense of Pope, Pope is doing all of this because he believes that McClellan is just around the river bend and going to hit Lee from the rear. Just around the river bend. He's, ho- he's, he's thinking he's just around the river bend and he's going to attack Lee from the rear uh, because over the night, Halleck said, move your army double quick. And McClellan said, not going to do that because I don't like Pope. So I'm going to move at a snail's pace. And not actually make it in time for this battle. Also, uh, he could have loved Pope like his mother. But uh, this is just some jackass uh, southern sympathizer traitor general that is doing everything in his power to To lose the war for the north. Uh, By 4.30 p.m. Prove me wrong. Yeah, but, uh, right. By 4.30 p.m., Pope <laughs> realizes that Porter's not doing anything and then directly orders Porter, you need to attack now. I told you hours ago, what are you doing? Attack now. Oh, could you? Uh-huh. Uh, but the messenger, Johnny, is going to get lost and doesn't deliver the message uh, until 6.30 p.m. Mm. You see? that? Yeah, that's it. That's the thing. They're going through woods. Yep. And right. Pope... Like they got, it's easy to get lost. Yeah, and Porter's again going to go Long Street. Not going to do that. Long Street. <laughs> Meanwhile, Union Cavalry Officer Buell reports that Long Street's movements towards the battlefield at 8.30 a.m. to McDowell's forces. But again, McDowell's forces are... Meh. We don't know where McDowell is. No, and McDowell in my s- sits on this order until 7 p.m. when he finally links up with Pope and says, Oh yeah, by the way, Long Street's on the move. It's like 11 hours? What's going on? The Pope believes that Longstreet's, and again, this is another brilliant Pope here, still thinks that Jackson's on the run, despite sticking it out and fighting for the last, you know, 12 hours, thinks that Longstreet's only there to cover Jackson's retreat and doesn't do anything to adjust for the fact that Longstreet's on his way. Mm. Or is there at this point. Really, at this point, there. By the time McDowell arrives... uh, at Pope's command, he suggests that Pope sends King's command uh, into the battlefield, but King was replaced with Hatch, and Hatch and Pope hate each other, so Hatch says, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so just petty children, just playground fights. Hatch says that the Sudley Road lives. that you want. Yeah, he says that the Sudley Road, uh, an attack there is going to be futile as it's clogged with Kearney's troops. And, you know, we can't, like the Union boys, they don't like to mix with each other. So we can't, like, you know, there are, there's, we can't 
go on the side of the road. We have to march on the road because otherwise our boots might get a little bit muddy, and we don't want that. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> this is this is it, it, this is why Yankee Doodle song right came about, right? Like because shit like this, like. <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, Lee is gonna order that Longstreet attack Union positions at Henry House Hill, but Longstreet was like, Nah. Do you remember how that went for the Union when they attacked Henry House Hill? Maybe we should send in a preliminary like scouting report to see how strong the forces are there at Henry House Hill before we just full out engage into an assault there. And Lee's like, Yeah, you're probably right. And that first preliminary attack. What? No, it doesn't go no, very no, well for the do con- that? it doesn't go well for the Confederates because they do get kind of cut to shit at Henry House Hill because it's a, it a pretty good defensible position as we learned from the first battle. Hey, how, how shitty would it be to be one of the dudes on that? Be like, hey, go see uh, just just how powerful that beast is, uh, and if you don't come back, we'll know. Yeah, <laughs> and by the end of this day's battle, uh, Pope shows what happens when your orders are too confusing, you have poor discipline, and nobody is, is coordinated at all. You get your ass kicked, and here we are. Over the yeah, night of the 29th, of the yeah, over the night of the 29th, Pope thought about retreating to Centerville, but was worried about perceptions. What, what, what's, what's Lincoln <laughs> going to think if I move? He's worried, he's worried about uh, upsetting Herr Lincoln. Yeah. So knowing that he <laughs> no longer has a coward. Well, maybe you should attack every once in a while, you jackass. Knowing he no longer has the numerical advantages, uh I'm so I, I'm so tired of hearing that. He's gonna he doesn't have it. Like Pope realizes now he doesn't numbers aren't on his side. He's okay. gonna telegraph he's gonna telegraph Lincoln and say, I lost seven thousand men, but I'm pretty sure the Confederates lost double that. They didn't. <laughs> No, but uh, no, no. He uh, he also the guy was retreating the whole time. This guy. And he's gonna a, say, "Look, all what all I need, all I need is McClellan to get here, and and, and for this fun, and one more day, <laughs> McClellan get here, and then the, and then we, we've got this." And Halleck is like, once again gonna order McClellan to march double quick, and McClellan's gonna go. Nah, <laughs> not gonna do it. Yeah. This is actually like McClellan will get brought up. It, then nothing happens from the charges, but he will get brought up on like delaying, you know, disobeying orders, uh, as well as Porter. Uh, but uh, nothing happens uh, to those he, guys. He should be charged with murder. He's in no hurry. Uh, Manslaughter, maybe. Pope is going to hold a war council meeting at 8 a.m. on the 30th with all of his generals urging him to move cautiously, uh, which is wise, as, again, he does not have the numerical advantage at this point. And Porter's command was spread all over the place, including some units still in Centerville, because that's where he thought... Uh, the enemy was, yeah. and that's what he ordered people to do the prior day, and some of his command never got any of these other confusing orders and just continued on to Centerville. <laughs> just, so his, a, his army so is showing like, up like, ah, uh, what do we do? Spread no, between here. Manassas and Centerville. Can and I take you over? There we are. I, don't, what do I, I don't know. And while the Union is trying to figure out what to do, Lee decides to have Longstreet attack Henry House Hill. After all, he goes, no, oh. you know what, Longstreet? Go ahead and attack. Cares? Longstreet's like, I don't... <laughs> I don't, I don't want, want to. to. <laughs> That's not a good idea. And uh, and Lee is like, no, you're going to do it right now. We can yeah. we can end this war. And Longstreet's like, okay, I guess if I have to. And so wait, he, he followed. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, he yeah, got, the Confederate. Yeah. Eventually, he, he does follow. Yeah. From his commander, commanding officer. Yes. Now Porter's going to redeem himself because he actually realizes what Longstreet is about to do, movement-wise, and he's going to send Buchanan to stem the onslaught. And oh boy, does it cost in life to stem the onslaught of Longstreet, <laughs> because the Union defense at this point only has two brigades on top of Henry House Hill facing oh. Longstreet's entire army. And at 4 p.m. on the 30th, and that didn't go well. Hood of Longstreet's command begins his assault. The 5th New York is going to suffer the highest casualty count of all Union forces in a single engagement in a single day through the entirety of this war. Well, and not up to this point in the war. Not up to this point. This is through the entirety of this war. The 5th New York. Never lost this many men Who are our Zouavs. These are our our proud soldiers that are supposed to be adept at hand-to-hand bayonet fighting. They wear the puffy big red pants and the fancy blue ornate cap and the big red hat. You know, a brilliant fucking target! Yeah, you look like a fucking peacock out there. Uh, And then, so, uh, how many got targeted? Uh, Of their 500-man regiment, in 10 minutes, 
they're going to lose 300 men. Ten minutes. Oh, what? Three hundred men. That is um, that's too many. I'm just gonna come out right here and say it. Uh, that's that's too many Man. too many lives to be lost in ten minutes. Um, you're not gonna win too many battles that way. Nope. And while all of this is going on, Pope is oblivious in his command post waiting for a telegraph from Halleck saying that McClellan on his, is on his way and is almost there to direct McClellan what to do. And McClellan is nowhere to be found. And Pope is just oblivious to the fact that his regiment just got obliterated in 10 minutes. God, that is... Uh, that is good God. And thank God that there are, or your deity of choice or whatever. I don't know why I said thank God, because I don't. But anyways, it's beside the point. Uh, it's because no you so, live in a uh, Christian nationalist country. They are, <laughs> there are brigade and regimental commanders like Reynolds and his brigade commander, Colonel Martin Hardin, that recognized what was going on and ignored orders to attack the Confederate flank, but instead reinforced Henry House Hill, which was about ready to fall at this point, because you lost 300 men in 10 minutes! I mean, yeah, that's quick. That's, I mean, that's what, like uh, what, 20, 30 rounds per gun? Yeah, this is, like, this is quick. This is quick. Uh, <laughs> at 6 p.m., under ambiguous orders from Lee to support Longstreet, Jackson is going to attack north of the Turnpike, uh, but this coincided with Pope's order uh, for the troops at the Turnpike to aid Henry House Hill, and Jackson is going to miss a golden opportunity to crush Pope as his army's moving positions, and instead he's only going to capture a couple of cannons, and Pope's army is gone. Like these, they they're just like just they, passing yeah. each other. So as they just moving. missed them. Uh, yeah. They got some of the cannons on the uh, probably a no, tail end, or would they tail end? Yeah, just tail leave end. Them? Yeah. Or is it just uh, well, the, I mean, the, the army where they're like cannons are being pulled pull by? Like, you know, oh well, fuck that. Uh, yeah, I'm cannons gonna, can't move. Can't, can't move as fast as soldiers, so the cannons right. take a little bit longer to get out of there. Yeah, uh, uh, which, by the way, maybe give the cannons a higher horsepower engine or something so that they can... Yeah, <laughs> something, yeah. Like, what do you uh, do? At 7 p.m., Pope has established a strong defensive line, and by 8 p.m., he's going to order the withdrawal to Centerville. But unlike the first Battle of Bull Run, Johnny, this is an organized fighting retreat as opposed to a rout, it's, and yeah. his it's, army it's is just pulling back to Centerville, away. which he should have done before this last battle even took place. But he was worried about optics, and well, and now like you fought a last battle, and die. you had 300 men get killed in 10 minutes, and now your optics are even worse. So, congratulations, Pope! And with that, the Confederates low on ammunition and nightfall approaching do not significantly pursue Pope, and Lee gains a good victory, <laughs> but fails to crush Pope as he had planned. And so really, like everything else in the Civil War up to this point, it is a wash, and doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing matters. So the South, they, they killed too many people and ran out of ammunition because they were just picking off yes. too many of the North. And they're just like, ah, we don't have bullets anymore. I'm sorry, we've killed can't pursue. a lot of you, basically. We can't pursue. And we can't pursue on account of um, how poorly uh, uh, supplied we are. Yeah. So, Johnny, after math report. After ah, math report. Jesus. This is, okay. We got a casualty report. Union is going to lose 1,747 killed, 8,452 wounded, 4,263 missing or captured of a total 62,000 engaged. That so like is 13, not a great number. 13,000 ish? Conf yeah, yeah. Confederates are going to lose 1,096 killed and 6,202 wounded. No reports on missing because the Confederates just make up their numbers as they go along because that's what we do in the South. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who's got time to keep records, Tommy? After after the battle, pretty much the day after the battle, Pope is going to be stripped of the command of the Army of Virginia, with it folding into McClellan's command because for some reason we decided Wait, to what? reward McClellan for not doing shit and helping Pope. Hold up, Tommy. I, I I assume he was stripped of command by Hare Lincoln. Hare Lincoln, yes. Hare Lincoln. Who and finally Howard. did a thing where he's like, "Oh, my general's not doing the damn thing, and we got to get rid of him." But he yes. stripped it and then, he, and then gave it gave to it McClellan. to McClellan, who like could have <sighs> could have captured Lee, could have come up from behind and 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 done a thing, but didn't <sighs> because he didn't like Pope. 
Well, actually, it's because he's a coward. Like, let's be honest. It's not I because mean, he really. didn't like Pope. He might not have liked Pope, but it doesn't matter. He did, he was never No, he wouldn't fight. do shit anyway. It, it, uh, uh. Stay tuned to our next episode that we do, which is going to be on the Battle of Antietam, which is going to prove this point even more because... Worse. Hell with McClellan. <laughs> um, uh, Pope is going to be instead sent out to the north, uh, very northwest, up to Minnesota to deal with the Sioux Rebellion because, I mean, if you fuck that up, who but, cares? It's a couple of Indians. Who, who gives a shit? You really can't fuck no, that No, I'm sorry. It, it, this is a big problem. Like, you don't just take a general that failed, fire him, and then put him in charge somewhere else. <laughs> You're out of the fucking army at this point. Should have been. But he's not. He's given command. Rid of him. Or yeah. demote. Start. Beep, 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 beep. I mean, it's kind of a demotion. Line, jackass. Yeah, it's no. kind of demotion. No, 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 he's no, no, in like a no, side no, 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 theater. No, 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 Tommy, you're misunderstanding. I, I'm talking restarting the game. Yeah, and put him as a private. You are, like, a you are now a few. Yep. now yeah. because you are <laughs> so inept at doing anything else that you go ahead to the front line and feel what it's like to be under the command of an inept general like, and like asked to basically just go commit suicide on the battlefield. You yeah, yeah. Absolute we got that. jackass. Instead, um, he just goes up north and, oh, I guess I'll deal with some Indians now and kill them and, I don't know, maybe uh, some more of my men too. Why now, Longstreet, uh, Longstreet, in the aftermath here, Johnny, uh, who is arguably one of the better generals in the Confederacy, and I know I just pissed off a shit ton of lost causers because the lost causers blame Longstreet for the South not winning the war because they blame him for not attacking at Henry House Hill on the first day. They also blame him for all the shit that went wrong at Gettysburg, even though Longstreet was like, hey, uh, Lee, maybe we should pull out of Gettysburg before the shit gets out of hand because, you know, we don't have as many men as the North does. And marching an army, you know, across an open field over a mile uh, isn't a smart idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyways, ha, ha, Longstreet gets blamed for this wait, loss. Did they consider blaming uh, maybe not having any supplies or not having any No, nah, it's lost causes. Having, they don't like, have any logic. Uh, enough they don't have any logic. There's no logic. Or anything. There's no logic. There's no logic to them, Johnny. Oh. There's no logic. Anyways, yeah. so Longstreet's going to get blamed for the uh, for the win here, but loss here because like it's it's a win, but it's not a total win. And like Pope's army really nothing should be happened. destroyed, it, but it's, it's not. A, like it's it should be a draw trigger. on both ends. It, nothing it pretty much happened. is. Just uh, actually, it should be a loss on both sides because y'all y'all just killed a bunch of kids. And more importantly, Johnny, it's going to give Lee the uh, the encouragement the the gumption the to invade maryland in his maryland campaign which we will talk about next week and how that didn't work out all that well for him attacking for a change that's it for this week in historic hindsight thanks for listening be sure to subscribe rate and review and join us next week when we talk about the battle of antietam